Well, uh, several uh, flights, uh, including Air India and Vistara, have changed their flight routes to avoid Iran. Air India on Sunday decided to temporarily suspend flights to Tel Aviv. To get more on what this really means for us, we have Dr. Subhash Goel, Chairman of Aviation Travel and Tourism Committee, the Indian Chamber of Commerce, uh, joining us. Uh, thank you, sir, for speaking to NDTV. Many flights have decided not to fly over the Iranian territory. Will this mean that it will get more expensive as far as the tickets are concerned and longer flights uh, as far as the passengers traveling to, say, Europe or further? Yes, I think all the airlines are trying to avoid Iran space. All the flights to and from Iran, the entire airspace of Iran has been closed. So there are alternative routes which take a little half an hour more when you go through Uzbekistan and, uh, you know, uh, Azerbaijan and, uh, you know, just under uh, the Iranian border, uh, close to Turkey, you can go straight to Europe. So it right. is a very unfortunate situation as it is the Ukraine-Russia war, uh, you know, the airspace over Russia and Ukraine is more or less closed and uh, most of the airlines are being diverted. As it is, the airfares have skyrocketed. <laughs> Before COVID in 2019, the airfares to uh, New York and Toronto were around uh, 60 to 70,000 rupees. To today, uh, even the economy class airfares are not less than 160 to 170, uh, 160, 70,000 rupees. So I think uh, they might further go up because uh, the airlines will have to burn extra half an hour of fuel by avoiding the airspace of Iran. And uh, not only that, uh, they have to also uh, avoid the airspace uh, of the Middle East, uh, particularly Israel. Uh, so, it is a very, very serious situation. I mean, uh, I hope that uh, our Prime Minister and uh, the President Putin and President uh, of USA will have restraint and uh, we will try to stop these wars because uh, the traveling public uh, is going to suffer in a very big way. And uh, Right, this so we're really seeing the impact the of the Ukraine war that continues two years hence. We're seeing the impact of uh, this escalation as far as Iran is concerned. The external affairs minister on Friday advised all Indians against traveling to Iran or Israel until further notice. Uh, you know, but take us through what if the Indian diaspora in Iran, if they need to get out of Iran, what are the options that are available to them? Well, uh, uh, right now there are no options unless the government of India, like they did in Ukraine, uh, operates. Uh, you see, government has very good relationship both with Israel and uh, Iran, thanks to a wonderful foreign policy that India follows. Because uh, we, rep uh, our company Stick Travel represents uh, Ukraine International Airlines. We, we operated a lot of charters until the government stepped in. And, uh, you know, for the Indians to leave, uh, I mean, this was very historical that both uh, Ukraine and Russia suspended or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, made a passage, uh, no war zone for the Indian uh, students to leave. Similarly, I think uh, now uh, today's news is that uh, uh, they have allowed uh, Indian diplomat uh, to go on board to talk to the Indians who are stranded on the ship, which That's has been, uh, you know, captured by Iran. So, I think... Uh, so, this comes on the heels the, of the conversation that took place between the finance minister, uh, between uh, the foreign minister, Jay Shankar, and Iran. Uh, so, take us through, sir. Uh, you know, they have, uh, uh, they've been demanding the release of that 17 Indian crew on board uh, that ship that has been seized by Iran. So far, all we know is that there seems to be some kind of communication that's been established. Uh, 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 how about the release of, uh, uh, you know, the Indian crew members there? You see, I am 100% confident that uh, this present government will be able to succeed in getting those Indians out. Even, you know, our Navy officers who were condemned to death uh, in Qatar uh, were finally released. So I think uh, today India uh, is becoming a superpower. It is already the fourth largest uh, uh, economy in the world and soon will be taking over, uh, you know, Germany and uh, Japan to be the third largest. So I think today uh, we have good relations with everyone. In fact, uh, I really strongly feel that Prime Minister Modi and Jay Shankar can play a very important role 
in bringing peace in the world uh, we it is high time before this uh, war escalates into a world war we need to you know diffuse these situations and india can play a very important role uh, both uh, in diffusing the situation between israel and hamas and between russia and uh, ukraine and right. also now between Iran and Israel. Right. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for talking to us here on NDTV.